Lulu here. All right, so Death Note is actually one of my favorite anime of all time. I know I don't really talk about it as much as I do Black Butler or Yuri on Ice, but it really is one of my favorites. It really is a masterpiece with its social commentary, genius mind battles, and incredibly fascinating peeks into the mind of sociopaths like Light. With that said, this week a one-shot was released of Death Note that takes place a about 10 years later, so I'm gonna review it. Granted, it's actually pretty short, but I'll try my best. So roll the intro and let's get started. Quick disclaimer before I start, this one shot involves some heavy politics and I don't particularly like talking about politics, so please no discussions and arguments about today's world leaders and shit in the comments. I don't really want people arguing about the Cheeto Man or whoever the fuck has nukes right now in the comments because frankly, I think we all can agree we get enough of that in the news. Now on to the review. The story takes place about 10 years later. I know the anime says he died in 2013, but Death Note's anime changed the story to 3 years ahead I think to match the year Death Note was released in the anime. Something like that. To this day, I don't know why they pushed the story ahead by three years. However, Light died in 2010 in the manga, and the story takes place in 2019, so pretty much almost 10 years. This one shot is about Ryuk who wants some apples again, so he drops the death note in the human world in 2017, where he meets a boy named Minoru Tanaka and picks it up, and you know, has the usual reactions to seeing a Shinigami. He asks a bunch of questions to Ryuk about Light, because he did admire Kira and how he worked, but noted you can't exactly use the death note and become the next Kira because today's technology and investigations would catch him immediately. Yet, he tells him to come back in two years when he's a high school student because he has plans involving the Death Note. Two years later, now in 2019, Minoru tells Ryuk that he's going to sell the Death Note because he legit doesn't want to kill people and just wants some money. That's honestly a pretty huge mood, to be honest. Now, the thing is, this manga really does show how difficult a Death Note in this day and age would actually be. And I think Oba actually does kind of roast the Netflix movie a little bit with its logical choices, considering this panel here describes exactly what the Netflix Death Note did, so... Anyway, as today, it's actually pretty easy to track someone down regardless of how hard they try to remain anonymous. Minoru has to get creative if he wants to sell it without getting caught, so he does. He has Ryu go pretty far away, giving us more lore about how far a Shinigami can get away from their user when they actually have a death note, and shows it to a cable TV station where he holds up a piece of paper quite literally saying he's selling the death note, and to use the hashtag on Twitter to place your bid. News starts coming in pretty fast, but Minoru has to keep reworking the auction because trolls on Twitter keep saying that they would give him impossible amounts of money he knows they won't be able to pay, so he decides only world leaders can auction for it. In the meantime, we see Nier and what he's been up to, which is pretty interesting as he's mentally pretty much exactly like L now. In a timeline sense, Nier is about 27 actually, so he's pretty much surpassed L in age, so that's actually really surprising. At this point, we see Nier has perfectly filled the new role of L, and although he tries to find the new owner of this death note, he gives up when he realizes this guy made it pretty much impossible to track him down thanks to his new methods. I know many people complained about this because a lot of people hate Nier because he's not a carbon copy of L, but I think this gives him an interesting insight into the alias of L. We do see in a couple official novels here and there that L only picked up cases that were legit interesting and had a high probability of being solved. Remember that characters like L and Nier are just as complicated as light. Back to Minoru. He sells it to Trump, of all people, for 10 trillion yen. You may think that this is how Nier will track him down because, like, some kid is getting 10 trillion yen. I mean, that's pretty suspicious, right? Except wrong. Instead of depositing it, it all to a single account, Minoru gives all the money to everyone under the age of 60 evenly all across Japan, so everyone in Japan gets 1 billion yen. Current conversion rates told me that 1 billion yen is about 9 million dollars, so holy shit, kid. This kid literally skyrocketed Japan's economy and never even used the death note so i can't tell whether light would be impressed or mad this kid didn't use it to kill people 
Miruru gives the Death Note back to Ryuk where he plans to live a normal and rich life now only for the king of Shinigami to put a new rule in the Death Note which is that if the user is selling the Death Note the seller will die once they receive the money and the buyer will die as soon as they touch it. Ryuk tells Trump this to which he says he refuses to die for the Death Note instead plans to lie to the public that he has it and won't use it because he's a good person while giving it back to Ryuk. I mean Oba really did do his research on the Cheeto Man. As tragic as it is, because Minoru received the money, he died, and Ryuk wished he could have gone on a little longer, just like we all do. The end. Now, this is a pretty good epilogue for Death Note. It explains a lot of lore that happened after Light died, and even where some of the characters are now, and introduced a new rule to the Death Note because of Minoru. Though for some negatives, I do think it's a little disappointing that Minoru dies. I mean, he wasn't exactly a great person, because he was willing to give the Death Note to dangerous leaders, who would have used it to kill millions of lives. But he wasn't exactly all that bad a person either because he also saved Japan's economy. And his plan was genius, so I don't really understand the reason to kill him, but I guess it was Obo's way of saying he wasn't doing another one of these again. I also really loved the art, but Obata's artwork is always amazing to see. I really do like Minoru's design, even though he really does look like an e-boy or a K-pop star, let's be real here. Nero's design was interesting i wasn't expecting him to have really long hair overall i really like this one shot it wasn't the masterpiece that is the original death note but i think it did what it came to do which was talk shit and leave i do kind of wish it lasted a little longer but i'm fine with it i'll take any new stuff from death note at this point anyway either way hope this review was fun for you guys this was a super quick one i know but i wanted to review this for you guys if you want to read it for yourself it's for free on viz media's website and the link to it will be down below though keep in mind it's only translated translated in English for now, I think, so I don't know about any other languages being translated. Let me know down below if you love Death Note 2, and I'll see you next time! Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! And if any old or new subs would like to help support the channel in any way, then feel free to visit my Ko-fi page down below in the description, along with my social media tabs! For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe want to talk about anime or something, then I have a fan server linked down below! See you next time!